as we think about the opening of, of avenues and we think about it both from a local and a global perspective, I'm just wondering how, how do you believe we should be thinking about technology? I mean, should we be thinking about it from the perspective of what every student holds in their hands? You know, they, every student gets a tablet uh, that's curated in some interesting way. Or do we think about it in terms of what's on the walls in every classroom? I think when you're thinking about technology and your new school, I think it's very hard, but I think you have to try to give up any school you've ever run or managed before. Uh, so that you don't have the problem Columbia has, or Georgetown has, or Dalton had, of trying to do things that are in some way against the grain. You have the opportunity to, in a sense, set in place what are the architectural structures that determine the grain of, and granularity of the institution. So I wouldn't start with the appliances. The set of digital tools that we spend a lot of time at Columbia making and focusing on because they're the things into which students drag information and then can work on that information all the way from a bibliographic tool of which there are a number on the market that are interesting to our own tools that we've created for uh, creating video libraries and being able to edit and annotate those videos and then plug those Edit, edits into a multimedia essay that you send to your to send to your teacher, which I can demonstrate if you if you'd like to see. Right, you're talking about digital space. In right. a few months, we have to worry about physical space, and what we're going to put in in that space, and how we can prepare it uh, to be useful for us in the future, at least the short-term future. And maybe this is a flat toads question. I don't know, but. But Alan's question was, what do we do in terms of putting things in people's hands, having things on, on the wall, et cetera? Because if we make some of those decisions and implement them in the initial renovation, it's going to be much more cost effective. If I were doing it, I would try to stay as flexible as possible. What the guy at MIT said to us is, you see these, uh, you see these laboratories? You see this building? All these walls up and down this corridor can be removed in a day or two. And we can reconfigure this entire building as people's laboratory and research and study needs change. And so flexibility, I would say, is really, uh, really important. What you do on the walls and what you do in the space should still be driven by the idea of the functionality of ubiquitous learning. That what is it that it, that, that it means to define your spaces by the idea that people are learning continuously and in all different kinds of spaces? So what can you do in a classroom that just makes that space connected to the idea that they're learning elsewhere? Even down to um, Wallenberg Hall, which is a fascinating space on the Stanford campus with many different innovative classrooms. One of the things I most like about Wallenberg Hall is the classroom is that they have these whiteboards that you can write on, and they have whiteboard rails all around the classroom. And when students are done brainstorming on whiteboards, there's all these document cameras. They just hang the whiteboard up, take a picture of what they've been sketching, and email it to the whole group that's been brainstorming. But that was with a mind to what we need to do inside the classroom had as much to do with, well, what then is continuous about this learning when the students leave this room? And, and that, to me, is part of what was the, the genius about that. And I think that... Um, designing rooms that allow people to bring their devices in, allowing rooms that allow people to access resources that they're going to access on the outside, that allow flexibility, um, designing non-classroom spaces that are also hybrid academic and social spaces with many of the same kinds of affordances. The, the physical space should be a reflection of whatever it is that learning space in a sense sets up as a as a, as a set of expectations, parameters, activities, habits, possibilities. I really am adamant about the fact that you really need to design the, uh, the virtual space almost as aggressively as you design the, the physical space. <laughs>